All right, 7.2, solving exponential equations. We're going to solve each equation. So the first one is, is really simple. When you look at the base and it's the same, all you have to do is compare the two exponents. And so if the 6 matches, then all we have to do is say that this exponent is going to equal this exponent. Negative 2a equals 2. So real simple equation. We're going to isolate the variable, divide by negative 2, a equals negative 1. Boom. Now they will get harder than that, but that first one was pretty simple. You look at problem number three. Number three is definitely going to be harder because those two numbers don't match. And so there are other ways of doing this, but for today, the easiest way to do it is to make those numbers match. And so I see a 64 and a 4. It would be nice if they both were 4s. So if you understand that 64 could be written as 4 to the third power, 4 times 4 times 4 equals 64. What I can do is just kind of rewrite the equation. 4 to the 3k equals 4 to the third. Hang on, I'm going to write that underneath. 4 to the 3k equals 4 to the third power. So essentially, I'm just trying to get a match. I want those base 4s to match because after that, all I have to do is look at the exponents. 3k must equal 3. You can do that problem in your head. k has to equal 1. So skip a step if you can. Divide by 3 to iso the variable. Skip that step if you can. k equals 1. So today's lesson is all about making a match. Number five, you've got a base two and a base one. You've got a two and you've got a one, and you wanna to try to make them match. Well, one could be written as two to the zero power. All right, that's tricky because you might not have thought of that or remembered that, but anything to the zero power equals one. So I can rewrite this as two to the negative three r equals 2 to the 0. Once you get that match, you're gold because all you have to do is say negative 3r equals 0. You can do that one in your head, probably, and skip a step. Otherwise, you're isolating the variable, so divide by negative 3r equals 0. We're solving equations involving exponentials. Okay. Now, you've got a 4 and you've got a 16. I want a match. What can I change this 16 into? Four. four to the second. Very good. Four to the second. So I've got four to the 2a equals four to the second. What must a equal at this point? Nope. Close. <laughs> Look at your exponents here. 2a has to equal 2. So I can divide by 2, a equals 1. Seems like your answer is 1 almost every time, but that's not, that's not always going to be the case. Jackson, you're on my video. Um, 64 and 2. It would be nice to make that 64 into a 2. Um, if you can't, I guess if you can't see it, you can always break it down. Divide by 2, you get 32. Divide by 2, you get 16. Divide by 2, you get 8. Divide by 2, you get 4. Divide by 2, you get 2. So we could break 64 down into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's 2 to the 6th power. 64 is the same thing as 2 to the 6th power. 2 to the 3a equals 2 to the 6th. You might be able to do this in your head. A must equal 2. A is going to equal 2. We're looking at the exponents. 3A equals 6. Divide by 3. A equals 2. Yeah, let's, let's go to the back real quick. A few more. 64 and 16. Okay. Everyone we've done so far, we've turned the bigger number into the smaller number or some power of the smaller number, but that's not going to work this time. You can't turn a 64 into a 16, but you can switch them both. All right. Eight, 
you can't change a 16 into a power of eight. So, you know, there's a couple of different ways of doing it. If you look at the 16, you could break it all the way down into twos. Divide by two, you get eight. Divide by two, you get four. Divide by two, you get two. So 16 is two to the fourth. And we just did 64 was two to the sixth, right? We just did that a second ago. 64 was two to the sixth power. Now here's what's kind of tricky here. All we did was we changed the, the 64 to two to the sixth. We still have to the negative two V. And all we did was we changed the 16 into two to the fourth. We would still have negative two V minus two. So this one's kind of complicated here. We're looking at the exponents, and I know we've talked about this before, but when you've got number, parenthesis, number, do you remember what we're going to do? Multiply, very good. Multiply. Okay. So, you know, ignore the base twos, but you're going to have six times negative 2v equals, same thing over here, number, parentheses, number, you're going to have to multiply. And if you can skip that step and go on to the next step, I'm fine with that. Just kind of my rule is if you skip a step, make sure you don't skip two steps. So uh, multiply that in your head if you want. You're going to get negative 12v equals distributive property. That's negative 8v minus 8. We're just trying to solve an equation. We're trying to isolate the variable. We would need to get the variables together and on the same side first. So I might add a V to both sides just to cancel that out there. Negative 12V plus 8V is negative 4V equals negative 8. All right, now we're talking divide by negative 4. V equals 2. A lot of hoops to jump through on that one. That one's a little bit harder than some of the others, but they're all kind of the same. Now, I don't know if you noticed this, but, but this problem number 11, we could have changed the 64 into 4 to the 3rd and the 16 into 4 to the 2nd, and it would have done kind of the same thing. If you did that, you would take this to the negative 2v and this to the negative 2v minus 2. You multiply those exponents negative 6v equals negative 4v minus 4, you're going to end up getting the same thing because I would add the 4v over negative 2v equals negative 4, divide by the negative 2v equals 2. And so really on this one, there were two different possibilities. It's a matter of do I want to change them into twos or do I want to change them into fours? It doesn't really matter as long as you get a match. What you can't do is change one of them into a four and one of them into a two. They have to match. So the secret is you've got to change them into the same thing. Well, I know 25 is five squared. Can I change 125 into a five? Five to the third power. 125 is five to the third power. You can get out a calculator if you need to um, and check five to the third. It's 125. Yeah, five to the third. But don't forget about the rest of the problem. I, I could see a common mistake being they completely forget about the minus two in minus one. So we have five to the third to the negative two in minus one equals five to the second. So once you've got this matching five, you can, you can kind of ignore it and just look at the exponent. You've got three times negative two in minus one equals two. And it's just an equation to solve. We're gonna do distributive property, negative six in minus three equals two. Add three and that's five, negative six in equals five. And divide by negative six and we get a fraction, kind of gross, doesn't mean it's wrong. All right, 
right. So is that right? I might just kind of double check my math and make sure. Negative 6n minus 3 equals 2. Okay. Um, one thing we can do, I suppose, yeah, that's probably right. You're going to need a fraction because you're trying to step a 125 down to a 25. So I suppose that makes sense. Okay, next one. There are multiple ways of doing this problem, but the easiest thing to do is to change the 81 into 9 squared. You could change them both into threes if you wanted to, but I don't really want to. I don't have to in this case. Nine to the negative r equals nine squared. So negative r equals two. I'm going to divide by this negative one. r equals negative two. Seventeen. I've got a sixteen and a sixty-four again. So we had this problem before. I think the easiest thing to do is if you recognize you can change 16 into 4 squared and 64 into 4 cubed. If you can remember a, a couple of your cubes and, and all of your squares and a couple of your cubes, you're going to have an advantage over people who don't remember that. So 16 was 4 squared. We need to take that to the nth power. 64 was 4 cubed. Take that to the negative 3 nth power. We're looking at the exponents. We're going to have 2m equals 3 times negative 3m, or 2m equals negative 9m. Sometimes students get confused by this one, but you have to get your variables together. They want to divide by 2 and get negative 9 over 2 or something like that. Um, I, I think you're almost better off to think about this problem looking at like like this. If I just put plus zero on the end, most people are like, oh yeah, I need to, I need to add the nine M over. You've got to get your variables together. And I didn't need that plus zero on there to do that. It just sometimes helps students to see. You're adding the nine M to get the M's together. We've got 11 M equals zero. It's not, it's not nothing, it's, it's equals zero. And so then we can solve, we can divide by 11 m equals zero. Nineteen, last one, two forty-three. You know, two forty-three is a kind of a big number, and and maybe you don't know that one. Um, I know I can't change it into a nine, so you might start by breaking down the nine. I know I can change that nine into a three. Nine equals three squared. So can we turn a two forty-three into a three? is the question. So three to the fourth power is 81. Three to the fifth power, ah, 243, there you go. 243 is three to the fifth power. Three to the fifth power. So you make your change and then leave the exponents that were already in there, like so. Once you get that match, once you get a base 3 and a base 3, you can ignore it and just look at the exponents. 5 times negative 2n equals 2 times negative n minus 2. Let's multiply. Let's distribute. Add 2n to get your variables together. That's negative eight and cancel equals negative four. We're gonna divide by this negative eight to cancel the negative eight. N equals negative four over negative eight reduces to one half. N equals one half.